this morning. Good morning, everybody. Oh, my goodness. It is full again. <laughs> Come on. It's full again. Wow. Wow. God is really doing something beautiful in Belgium. If you, have, if you have not recognized it yet, you just have to come to church on Sunday. And you'll see that God is busy working in this beautiful country. Good to see you, my man. Nicholas, good to see you. Well, for those of you who, um, uh, this it's the first time that you've made it to the second service. Come on. Well done for being here. Well done for checking your alarm clocks and making sure that you're at the right time. Um, uh, for some of you, you might have already had coffee, but you're going to have coffee again after church, which is amazing. Yes? Um, uh, we are still working out the glitches, still figuring out how things are going to work with the two services. But I just want you guys to know, you might not have, you, you might not have seen but the first service has already been amazing. I had so many people here this morning. And I'm going, Lord Jesus, thank you for your growth. Thank you for what you're doing in the church. Um, uh, and we want to see more of that in this next season. Yes? So, good news for all of you. Um, uh, I prepared my message and I was like, I'm so excited. It's Pentecost Sunday coming up in the next, in the next few weeks. And I want to preach about the Holy Spirit. So I thought I'd start it today. Um, uh, and uh, when I started doing my research, I went and I, and I started pulling together this incredible sermon. And um, uh, I realized there's no way I'll be able to preach any of these sermons um, uh, in one sitting. So good news for me is I don't have to prepare for the next three weeks. <laughs> Good news for you is I only preach one of the points that I prepared. Yes? So um, uh, we're going to trust the Lord that we can, we can um, uh, be out of here by half past of this morning. Yes? Are we ready? Yes. Come on. The Holy Spirit is already here this morning. His presence is moving in such a beautiful way. And if you've read the book of Acts, the disciples were gathered together in the upper room. After um, uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, he'd gone on um, uh, and uh, he'd already ascended in the clouds and they were hanging out in the upper room and they were praying. And the Bible says that about 120 days after Jesus had ascended, the Holy Spirit of God came and it fell on the disciples and it fell upon the disciples as tongues of fire. Oh, and the whole place that they were, that they were in was shaken. It was shooken that day, it's like it was shaking this morning when we were singing, show your power. The place was shaken and the Holy Spirit ascended upon his people and Peter, the same Peter that denied Jesus a couple of chapters, chapters earlier is the same Peter that gets out onto the streets and he opens up his mouth and he starts preaching with great boldness about this Jesus Christ who walked the earth, who was crucified, who was resurrected and who ascended into, G in, into the heavens. And he makes an altar call and 3,000 people get saved that day. Come on. And the Holy Spirit's power just continues to work inside of the church in persecution, in execution in the middle of, of arenas, being crucified upside down. The Holy Spirit's power kept on impulsing the church of God. And 2,000 years later, the Roman Empire has met its end. But the church of Jesus Christ is still standing. And we will be standing up until the moment Jesus comes. Yes? Because this gospel that we have is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God unto salvation. And it really it impulses and it moves us on towards the more that God has for us on a day-to-day -day basis. Isn't it amazing to know that this God that we serve is not dead, but he is alive. And he's alive in us this morning. And when Jesus ascended, he said, I will not leave you alone. I'm going to send you a helper. Send you a counselor, a comforter. And he will teach you all things. Oh. And right now in this place, we have the third person of the, of the Trinity. God, the Holy Spirit. And he's here. In this place. And for those of you who have experienced his power and his presence... What you've experienced is the Holy Spirit. 
And for those of you who have heard sweet whispers into your heart about who God is, what you've experienced is the Holy Spirit. For those of you who have experienced healing and restoration this morning, for those of you who have experienced comfort and hope this morning, for those of you who have felt the joy and the life and the peace of God this morning, you've experienced the Holy Spirit. Because God is in this place by the power of His Spirit. And the Holy Spirit plays a very important role in our walk with Jesus. And today, point one of four, I want to talk to you about the role of the Holy Spirit to confirm our, our identity as children of the Most High God. To confirm our identity as children of the Most High God. A couple of weeks ago, I had a young person come up to me and um, uh, he had gotten saved recently. And he grew up in a Christian home, but because of circumstances in his family, um, he started walking away from who God was. And then eventually, um, uh, he got invited to a baptism service at, at Vineyard Brussels, where one of his friends were going to get baptized. And he experienced the power and the presence of God. And he gave his life to Jesus again that Sunday. And he was like, man, God has been working in my life ever since. But let me tell you something. There are times when I don't feel like coming to church. There are times when I feel guilty and ashamed. Because I realize that the same person that, 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 that I was yesterday is the same person that I am today. And some of the things that I did yesterday, I still do today. And I feel guilty and I feel ashamed. I don't feel, I don't feel as if I'm worthy to come to church. I don't know if I'm still a son. And this was my opportunity to help him to understand that he is a son of the Most High God. And nothing and no one can pluck him out of the hands of the Father. I have a 15-year-old boy at home. And he is incredible. But there's no one that can make me more angry than that 15-year-old boy. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what he does. He will always be my son. He will always be my boy. And I will always be there for him. And I will always be the one that's first to hug him. First to kiss him. First to grab him and say, you will take a 20-second hug. You guys know that, that after 20 seconds, right, um, endorphins get released from your side and his side. So after 20 seconds, it's like, mm, I'm holding on, and a hug becomes a real hug. So I hold on for 20 seconds. I kiss my wife for six seconds or more. <laughs> and I hold him. Sometimes he squirms. Most of the time, he's just like, yeah, I want this. I want, I want to be helped. It doesn't matter what he does. He'll always be my boy. And the Holy Spirit's role in our life is to help us to recognize and realize that we are sons of the Most High God. Let's read Romans 8, 15 to 16. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. So when the Bible says sonship, it's not just for men, it's for women as well. Sons and daughters. But sonship is what the Bible speaks of in, 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 in Scripture. So ladies, it's for you as well. So you have received a spirit of sonship. You've been adopted into his kingdom. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of the Most High God. This passage just, just identifies for us to, again the role of the Holy Spirit and the importance of the Holy Spirit's role in our lives to make us remember that we are His and He is ours. So the first thing I want to share with you this morning is assurance of salvation. And for some of you, you're like, Ricky, I know this. I did my, my foundations class. But for many others, you might not. 
And there might be times in your life when, like this young boy, you do some stuff or you, or, you, or you sin and you walk away from God and you're like, I don't know if God loves me anymore. I don't know if he cares for me anymore. How could God love me when I am doing these things? And like Paul, there are times when we go, man, the things that I want to do, these things I do not do. And the things I want to do, um, uh, I find that the things I do not want to do, these things I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. And there are times when we look at ourselves and we think, oh, wretched man that I am. I know what is right. And the Bible says, for him who knows what is right to do and does not do it, for him does he sin. So when you know what is right and you're walking away from those things, there are times when Satan comes and he accuses you because he is the accuser of the brethren. It's his job. His job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy, and he's also the father of lies. So when he comes and he speaks to you, he comes and he tells, tells you, you're not a son anymore. Look at what you've done. Look at how you've messed up. Look at how you've sinned. How could God still love you when you have done these things? And he lies to you and he accuses you and he says, how can you stand before a holy God the way that you are? And it's in those moments where the Holy Spirit comes and he whispers into our hearts. A righteous man falls seven times. But he gets up. So when the Holy Spirit whispers into our hearts, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit whispers into our hearts, it is by faith by, that you've been saved through grace. By grace, it's not of works that any man should boast. And the Holy Spirit whispers into our spirit that we are saved not by our own works. We are saved by Jesus Christ imputing his righteousness upon us. And because we are in him, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But when we do not know that voice, Satan can wreak havoc with our hearts. And the time between when we sin and the time when we return to God becomes longer and longer. And God says, why are you running away from me? Why aren't you running towards me? Satan comes and he says to you, you're not a son anymore. How would a son do that? And when you hear that voice, I want to encourage you to resist the devil because he will flee from you. Because the Bible teaches us when, so when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit will raise up a standard against him. And this is our call as God's people to allow the Holy Spirit of God to raise up a standard in our lives. And that standard is not a standard that is set by our morality or by our ethics. That standard is set by the word of God. What does God's word say about me? And the Holy Spirit will assure you, you are mine. And no one can pluck you out of my hands. The second thing that the Holy Spirit does for us is it helps us to, to, to walk in intimate relationship with God. And if you look on our wall outside, you'll see the first thing that as a church we are trusting for Belgium is that people get to know God. That they don't just know about God, but they get to know God. That they don't just know about religion or religious expressions and they be able to teach you about philosophy and history, but they're not able to tell you about the living present God today. Our desire is for every person in Belgium to get to know God, to know Him, to walk in intimate relationship with Him. And this is one of the works of the Holy Spirit. One of the works of the Holy Spirit is to, is to connect us to that Abba, Father. That Daddy, God. The Holy Spirit wants to help us to reflect that intimate connection that we have with the Father. Now, I'm a dad, Federico, I'm a dad. I'm a dad of three kids. 
I remember the first day that the doctor laid Alejandro right here on my chest. It's one of the best days of my life. I cried like a baby. He's, he's supposed to be crying. He wasn't crying. He was quietly lying on my chest. And I am bawling all over the place. And I've got this little head right here on my shoulder. And I, and I smell him. Oh, and I feel him on me. And I hold him. And I, and I speak to him. I say, my boy, I will be there for you. I will always protect you. I will always love you. I hope that you'll always be able to run to me whenever you have trouble. This is what the Holy Spirit is there to help us to do with God. He's there to help us walk in intimate, knowing, loving relationship with the Father that loves us more than anything else, whose heart is for us, whose grace is sufficient for us, who wants to just draw us into his arms and tell us, man, I love you so much. And I've got so much hopes for you so much plans for you. Man, I started telling him about the stuff that the two of us were going to do together. Yeah? And when you are lying on the chest of your dad, he'll start to reveal purpose to you. He'll start to reveal destiny to you. You see, we think very often that our purpose is in the stuff. But the only place we find real purpose is not in how much we accumulate or how high we go in our jobs. It is in knowing God and living His purpose for our lives. And if our purpose involves us going to greater heights in our careers, if our purpose involves building huge businesses, absolutely amazing. Because then we will not be doing it from a sense of, I need to find my identity in what I do. We will be doing it from a place of, I know who I am as a child of God, and He's asked me to do this. Yes? Because when God asks you to do something, it is filled with life. And it's filled with purpose. So one thing to figure out what God's called you to, calls us to that place of intimacy. And this is one of the things that the Holy Spirit helps us to do, is to recognize the voice of Abba Father. The third thing the Holy Spirit helps us to do is to transform our character. In Galatians 5 and 22, it says, For the fruit of the Holy Spirit is... The fruit, Anthony, I love fruit, Anthony, but these types of fruit I struggle with sometimes, I have to admit. He says, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in us, produces in us, the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in us, our co-laboring with the Holy Spirit in our lives, the fruit that that will produce in us is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Against such there is no law. God is saying, hey, if you want to bear these fruit in your life, get to know the Holy Spirit. Get to know Him. Because He will help to produce that fruit inside of you. I promise you, I don't have it. <laughs> By myself, I don't have it. I don't know about you, but I struggle with patience sometimes, Gabs. I struggle. And it's in those moments where I go, Jesus, I might be a bit impatient right now, but I thank you that you've got all the time in the world, and you are going to help me to temper my impatience with your patience, Lord. I learned early on in, 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 my, in my career as a pastor, I learned early on in my career as a pastor that I need to do things in my garage. I'll tell you why. Because when you become a, a pastor, you realize that things don't go to your timelines. You want to start something, you want to finish something. But the way that God works is not the way that I work. God will start something in somebody's life and he will establish them in his time over his, in his way. 
And as a pastor, as a person that likes to complete things, that wants to start something and finish something, there were times when I was like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. I want to see it starting. I want to see it finishing. But it is open-ended the whole time. And I got so frustrated. And there were times when I wanted to push people towards the end. I'm like, man, can't you see the end? That's all you need to do is this. And God told me, hey, just relax. Go build a table. If you want things to to finish and start to to start and finish when you want it to start and finish, go to your garage and go build a table. Because then you can see it starting and you can see it finishing. But these are not tables, these are people. And they are not your people, they're my people. So you take your hands off and you allow me to build them in the timelines that I have for their lives, not yours. And as frustrating as it was, it is a lesson I've had to consistently give myself to. That Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And as much as I want to build and I want to shape and I want to push, as much as the prophetic and the apostolic edge inside of me wants to move people to another place, God says, relax. It's not your place. It's mine. They're not your people. They're mine. Take your hands off. And I go build a table. (laughs) The Holy Spirit helps to transform our lives. He helps to make us more like Jesus. He helps to, 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 to have this fruit that's already in us because we've got the fullness of the Holy Spirit in us to mature so that we can look like Jesus. My final point for this morning is he reminds us of our inheritance and reminds us that we are co-heirs with Christ. Let's look at Romans 8, 17. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may share in his glory. Come on. We are co-heirs with Christ. God is is reminding us. The Holy Spirit reminds us. There are times in life when things might not go the way you want it to. There are times when life hands you lemons. And you don't know how to make lemonade. All you have is lemons. Lemons. And the Holy Spirit reminds us in those moments that we are co-heirs with Christ. That everything that we need for life, God has given us. And he also reminds us that even if we don't get it this side of heaven, Sam, we're definitely going to get the fullness of that when we get into, into eternity one day. I believe that God wants us to eat our steak on our plate while we wait. What that means is that we get to live a victorious Christian life today. However, not everything happens now the way we want it to. And in those moments, the Holy Spirit reminds us, you might not see it now. But one day when you're with me, there'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more cancer. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more anxiety, no more lack. Everything that you need is yours. It's been given to you. I think there are times when we become too temporally minded. that We only think of this 70 plus 20 years that we've been given on earth. And we don't forget. And we don't remember that this 70 years is but a drop in the bucket of eternity. And God wants to remind us, guys, you are heirs of the inheritance of Christ. You are heirs of the inheritance of Christ. One day you're going to be with him. And while you are here, you can walk in that inheritance. While you are here, you can have the fullness of life that you are trusting me for. While you are here, you can, you can push into the more of God for your life. But when it does not happen the way that you want it to, there's still an inheritance waiting for you in heaven. Amen. So we do not put our eyes on that which is temporal. 
We put our eyes on that which is eternal. And we don't build for ourselves cities on the earth, but we store up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. I believe in this next season, the Lord is going to raise up many men and women that are going to be impacting society in incredible ways. He's going to raise up men and women that are going to be impacting business in incredible ways. I believe that as we come towards the end of times, that, 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 that the Lord is going to raise up um, uh, doctors and lawyers, and he's going to raise up politicians, and he's going to raise up a, a, a church that is going to be seen and known, and everybody's going to look at them and go, why are you different? What is it about you that makes you so different? And we will be able to look at them and go, it's Jesus Christ in me that has made the difference. And he wants to make a difference in your life as well. You have what you need. Everything that you need, you have. Because the Father has given it to you. As I come to a close for this morning. I want to pray that we choose to embrace the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That we learn to distinguish the voice of the Holy Spirit again. That we learn to distinguish that still small voice. That we learn to hear him when he speaks. We learn to experience that little, that, that, that little nudging of, the, of, of Jesus towards what he wants for us. And in those areas where we have become hard and calloused, that the Holy Spirit would once again come and he would bring healing and restoration and we would be soft again and willing to listen and obey. I want to pray for every person in this house that's like, Ricky, you know what? It's been a while. And I've been overwhelmed by guilt. I've been overwhelmed by condemnation. I know what I'm meant to be, but I'm living here. And that dichotomy, that lack of integrity, It's really messing with my heart. I want to be what God's called me to be, but sometimes it's hard. And it stopped me from running to him. In fact, I've been running away from him. And God's calling you back. And he's saying, my boy, my girl, come back to me. Run to me. Don't run away from me. Don't run away from me. My grace is enough for you. My strength will be made perfect in your weakness. I've got everything you need for your life. All I want is for you to come and lay your head on my chest again. All I want is for you to hear my heartbeat again. I don't condemn you. I do not operate in condemnation. The Holy Spirit convicts, he doesn't condemn. And it's uh, the goodness of God that draws us to repentance. And he says, come, I'm good, I'm loving. And if you just lie here with me, I will restore your soul. And though your sin be as scarlet, I will make it as wool. So for those of us here this morning, as we close our eyes together, And I'm talking to Christians for just a second. I'm talking to those that know Jesus and love Jesus. But you've been struggling with guilt and condemnation. Shame and guilt has really made the times between when you meant to be going to Jesus and a time you sinned so much longer. And God is saying, come to me. I've got you. I don't reckon your sin against you anymore. Jesus died 
and he imputed his righteousness on us. So we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want to remind you of your righteousness this morning. So if you've been struggling in this area, I want to ask you, where you are, just so I can see it, I want to pray with you. So when you raise your hand, it's nothing magical. It's just a point of contact where you go, yes, that's me. I'd love to, to, to receive from this prayer this morning. If that's you, and you're saying, Ricky, I want to, I want to run to Jesus. I've been walk, I've been, I'm a Christian, I love him. But the times between when I sin and I run to the Father has really become longer and longer. And I want to shorten that gap again. I want to run to him quickly. Just raise your hand for me where you are so I can see it. I'm talking to Christians, yeah? Talking to God's people, there we go. All around the room, I'm seeing people's hands going up, going yes. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can put it down again. Thank you, Lord. I've seen you. The Lord has seen you. He knows your heart. Very quickly, if you have never received Jesus Christ into your life and you really want, you're going, Ricky, I want to know this Jesus that you're talking about. I want to know this loving Father that you have been talking about this whole morning. Would you do me a favor? Would you raise your hand? I want to lead you into relationship with Jesus this morning. If that's you, just raise your hand. I'll pray with you. Come on. Good. So church of God, can we stand together? And I'm going to pray for my brothers and sisters. And then we're going to close. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. These are holy moments, guys. These are holy moments, holy moments. These are holy moments when we bring our hearts back to the Father. Holy moments. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Would you have your way? If you wanted to receive this morning, you can just put your hands out in front of you. Just again, it's just a gesture of being willing to accept or receive from the Lord. Nothing magical about it. You're just putting your hands out there and saying, give, give to me, Lord. I am here to receive from you. So that's you. Just put your hand out in front of you and we're going to pray. Come, Holy Spirit, would you have your way? Would you have your way? Here I am, Lord. It's me, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Father, we just want to say thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, that every day is a new day. Every day, every moment is an opportunity for a new beginning. 
So, Lord, here we are, your children. And, Father, we bring our hearts before you. And we say, Lord, we are ready for a new beginning. We are ready, Father, to run to you once again. Where we have run away from you in our guilt, Lord, in our shame. We, we bring that before you. And we say, Dad, we, we, we ask you for your forgiveness. And we receive your forgiveness this morning. We thank you that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you that you do not reckon our sin against us anymore. We thank you, Father, that all of our mess has been nailed to the cross, Lord, and you do not remember it anymore. As far as the east is from the west, Lord, you've removed our transgressions from us. So we bless you for that, Lord. And we thank you that we can come boldly to your throne of grace. We can run to you, Lord. And we can find mercy in times of trouble, Father. So, Lord, we decide this morning again that you will be the first person we run to that we will not listen father to the lies of the enemy any longer and we will listen to your voice lord and when you speak to us lord we will run to you and we will we will run into your arms lord and we will receive your love father we will receive your goodness lord and in that place father we will come to wholeness lord in you in jesus name father i pray blessing over this community and i pray lord that by your grace they would increase, Lord, that we would not just increase in this room, Father, but that we would increase in our families, Lord, that we would increase in our jobs, Father, that we would increase in our businesses, Father, in Jesus' name, that we would increase in politics, Lord, that we would increase, Father, in entertainment, Father, that we would increase, Father, wherever, Lord, you have called us, that we would grow, Lord, to, to, to represent the image of Christ Jesus, Lord, to a world that is in desperate need of a Savior. So come, Holy Spirit of God, and use us for your glory. We bless you that we could gather here today as your people. Now I pray that as you scatter us, Lord, that we would go with the power of the Holy Spirit and we would be salt and light, Father, wherever you have called us to operate in the name of Jesus. All God's people said, amen and amen and amen. Bless you. Jesus.